Hi guys. DJ Lunchbox, The Wrestling Mayhem Show, and I want to talk to you about PittsburghOnVideo.org. It is the place to be for all things Pittsburgh related on video. You can find lots and lots of videos from Sorgatron Media as well as many, many other people all based out of Pittsburgh. It's a fantastic place to be. We love the city. You love the city. And if you don't, you will. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check it out. Hey guys, on this edition of Awesome Cast, conferences, conferences, and more conferences. It's E3, it's WWDC. It is a double, triple, quadruple header of geek awesomeness, and we talk about it all with Norm Hulesman from iTwisty.com. All this and more. Awesome Cast. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 153. I'm Mike Sorg here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get awesome with you and talk tech. And it sounds like we're outside. It sounds it sounds like we hear nature. Uh, with me is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. It's Chachi. Da, 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 da. Is that is that your song? It was. Oh. Do you like it? Hey, he's uh, he's he's sticking it out. Uh, the big E3 week. Yeah, next week I'm taking it off. Holy crap, yes. At, at, at least just the, the first, the two main days. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to work those two days. <laughs> it's probably a good strategy um, of trying to do a video game site. So, uh, well, I was able, I got through all of Microsoft yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I had prior plans that night, so I, I was already going to miss Sony. And then today I got through, well... I don't know if anyone really got through Nintendo. Um, it, it was just a horrible, <laughs> horrible stream on their part. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I made it from the start and what I think was the end. Um, but the only problem was I was listening. I couldn't really tweet or uh, write anything down uh, while they were going on because, well, I was at work. So Yeah. Oh. Also with us to talk to WDC and whatever else is going on. Another, he's an Apple fanboy, and he's a member of the 1200 Club. Norm Hulesman, at Mr. Derby on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? Doing well. I'm probably the one bringing the nature. You're bringing, yeah, show. I think so. I, you're, you're giving us the sweet, sweet sounds of the neighborhood over there. Yes, and earlier a, rev, a motorcycle was revving itself outside my window relentlessly. So if that happens, I may have to um, pause my mic and... Uh, there's a dog the window. <laughs> There's definitely a dog right now, so that's okay. That's uh, that, that's well, that's not my dog. I tell you that much. <laughs> no, that dog is coming from somewhere in my neighborhood. Oh, that's your neighborhood. I don't know. They're yeah. all kind of coming together, so I can close the window and that's fine. Maybe that'll go um, away. Um, but this is the awesome cast where we open the window and let whatever sounds come in and uh, talk tech. Uh, you can drop us a line up uh, over at. A contact at awesomecast.com. Check us out on Google Plus on Facebook. Uh, you can also tweet us at awesomecast on the Twitter. Uh, and uh, drop us a line. Let us know what news and what you think uh, during the week. And, uh, and we tend to talk about it here on the show. Kind of a light news week up until bam, everything dropped yesterday. Uh, so, first. <laughs> Tell me about it. Right? Hey, well, Especially for I, games. You guys are like, my Twitter feed was two things yesterday <laughs> during the day okay and that's and that's when i read well no actually three things still and that's when i read twitter the most mm -hmm. uh, it, it was microsoft and the xbox one uh wwdc and the nsa yeah <laughs> those were the three things occupying my twitter feed yesterday yeah uh, yeah, and it's been a steady feed like like the entire uh, two days. It, uh, it's it's been pretty remarkable because everybody's still reacting from it today, right? Right. Uh, so well, well, first let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chachi, what do you have? Uh, it, it's kind of an overall thing. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed this earlier. Um, my awesome thing of the week is variety. Okay. Um, and. and uh, it kind of hit me like a uh, like a brick earlier because well I have to uh, it, it, with insert coin I have to think of some way to comprise uh, posts and articles for it 
And I, I notice that every other video game website and the internet in general all has opinions. Yeah. And I don't want that. Okay. I, I, I want objective news a video game news coverage. So you want to be part. you want to be like like a video game white sheet almost. It sounds like right. Well, I mean, it, it's not there. Find me a website online that does that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I mean, um, but uh, variety because uh, for the first time in uh, current video game history, uh, you have a variety that is pretty much equal on all levels. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I had to explain this to the guys at work because uh, once they saw the price for the PlayStation 4, they're like, oh, well, that's the one we're going with. Mm-hmm. But each side has its good points and its bad points. And you can go survey 20 people and 10 of them will side with the Xbox and 10 of them will side with the PlayStation. Yeah. And, because, I mean, they're that close. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, it, variety. You've, you've had variety in... Uh, video games in the past, but not as much as you do now. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a mainstream gamer, you have uh, two and a half choices. Uh, you have you have the Xbox One and you have the PlayStation Four, and, and you have the choices iPhone. the the Wii U. Yeah. Um, if you're an indie gamer, you have the Ouya. You have uh, what was the name of that one you picked up? Oh, uh, the Game Pop. Yeah, the game pop, and then you have uh, the new Mad Cats one that I can't remember the name of right mm -hmm. now. Uh, if you're a PC gamer, well, there you go. I I mean, yeah, there's so many choices. Yeah, it, it, there there is a flavor for everyone. Yeah, certainly, and and, and we we'll get into it definitely a, a bit more with Let's Play. But um, there was a really good line. One, the disappointment with Nintendo by not really showing much of anything like it's kind of like we're going through the paces you're going to get a new mario kart you're going to get a new this but just seeing uh just the fact that microsoft and sony are duking it out the way they are uh sony coming out and saying pretty much just kind of doing a left hook with the price and the uh uh taking a stance against what microsoft is trying to do with their uh uh you know with their borrowing policies and everything it was just in the chat room earlier uh actually still up in there uh, uh, uh but the the sony video of how do you share games on the playstation 4 is tremendous and and i've been saying this on twitter all day it feels like sony has returned to the reason that I got a PlayStation on PlayStation 2. like that, it, It's the only reason they're in this conversation that, right now. Exactly. That attitude. They're like, we couldn't do anything about the last seven years of video games about what we were doing, right? Uh, right. Now we have a chance to start over, and they fired the first shot. Actually, we fired the shirt first shot. They fought a big, bigger shot. We're going to have, uh, 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 you know... A, a good response to that you know what i mean um and just to see the fanboy explosion that happened in that session last night was tremendous and it's like okay this is all you know now right. now we're not really sure which like it's not obvious anymore you know what i mean uh whereas i really think like playstation 3 always felt like number two they have great games over there but you're have more on the Xbox. Xbox seems to do it better. And I think Xbox is still going to win on presentation. Uh, presentation and uh, online play. Yeah. I'll go ahead and say. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, PlayStation is finally in the conversation. Um, and it, it took them a while. It took them a really long time. Uh, the new console. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but they're, they're finally in this conversation. And it, I, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing stopping them but themselves Yeah. as far as being successful. And it, you're going to notice them take hits, and you're going to notice Microsoft have to adjust. Because, I mean, they have six months until the, the final software for the console has to be out. Yeah. And so you're, you're going to notice that Microsoft is probably going to go back on some of the things they said. Well, yeah, it's, it's early. It's E3. They can go back and forth either way, right? Right. And PlayStation is going to do the same thing because uh, one of PlayStation's uh, or Sony's one of Sony's big 
uh, things last night was uh, online f- multiplayer online play finally. Yeah. Um, but they're charging. Yeah. Uh, Which was and, quietly uh, swept under the rug, it felt like, didn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> because like, everybody's too excited about the other stuff. It's like, oh, by the way, we're going to start charging for this. So now right. you just took that away from everybody. So, But, uh, I, but uh, it, it's going to end up being the, the same as Xbox Live, or yeah. Gold. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, they're even on that point. And it's also, um, and it's also interesting to see... Um, What's going on with with the services? Uh, Xbox is trying to keep up with what you know PlayStation Plus is doing uh, by starting to offer you free games with your uh, Xbox Live uh, subscription, right. which we all have anyways. And now suddenly we all have Halo Three and Assassin's Creed Two coming in July first. Coming yeah. July first, which um, um, they started with uh, Fable Three, which was immediate was immediately available. So that's part of that. Yeah, interesting. That was their their kickoff one. Um, now, and that's and that's to keep after that, right? Yeah, it's yours. Wow. Um, you you have to. I mean, it's a five point six gig download. Yeah. So you, if you just have in, internal uh, storage, then you're pretty much screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll have to uh, get rid of everything else. But still, that's amazing. They're giving everybody. Halo Three and Assassin's Creed Two, which were like blockbuster, all you know, platinum hits games. Right. And here you well, go. Well, by this by this point, they're they're games that the sales are done with. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean that, and, and, and it's not like everybody has Xbox Live. You know, right. there's plenty of people that don't. But that's a good reason to get it. You know, that's a really good incentive. And we're talking about, like, what, Assassin's Creed 4 is coming out. Uh, uh, right. uh, Halo 5 is starting to be talked about. And you're going to give the ones from, like, two versions back. That, yep. That's that's fine in that in that regard, then. Um, especially, yeah, I know, it's, I, I know you, know, you were just kind of dabbling in Halo to begin with uh, now. So, I mean, that's something new to you. And there's plenty of people probably haven't checked out Assassin's Creed. That's true. But, I, I mean, the whole thing... Um, like I said, it all goes back to uh, everyone being equal now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, with the exception of a uh, Nintendo who doesn't quite know what the heck they're doing, um, mm-hmm. which is sad. But uh, it, yeah, it, it, they're all equals. And, and you talk about them being equal, even more so than than ever before. Uh, both of them uh, that we can see so far pretty much have the same specs. They're both based on AMD x86 chips, which people are very excited that, like, well, if we're developing for PC already, we know how to do that, you know. Um, yeah. um, as far as the uh, answer uh, the question in the chat room that was up a second ago, I think uh, I think Tonio out, out there was uh, was asking it. Uh, PS4 is not backwards compatible because of the hardware change. Uh, both <laughs> this is interesting too. Both the Xbox and the PlayStation, and the Wii for that matter, were all uh, IBM Power PC based, which is kind of the base of what the old Macs used to be before they went Intel. Uh, so, because of that architecture change, not going to be backwards compatible at all. Uh, apparently, Sony is going to try to solve that because their Gaiku cloud service is coming out next year. Uh, is going to have select titles are going to be like kind of re released through it. So I'm, I'm sure you're gonna have to like rebuy them or something, uh, but or maybe right, be, which is not backwards compatible. Which that, that's not technically no. That's the same thing as as re-releasing Wind Waker two con- consoles later. Yep. You know, I mean, it's nice, and I'm sure it'll be. Hopefully, it would be really cheap doing that, like over the cloud service, having that availability, having that possibility, like release more titles that way uh, instead of you downloading a big five gigabyte file like we're seeing now with you know Fable three, uh, and having to have that hard drive. For it full. I just saw, what was it? Uh, Julie from Insert Coin, I think, was saying about her hard drive was full today. You know, right. it's like, well, you're going to start seeing a lot more of that because everybody's going to install their games now. And I wonder yep. how PlayStation 3 people are dealing with that as it is. Well, the, the PlayStation historically has already uh, has always had uh, more storage. Yeah, because they knew they had to install every game. <laughs> right. So. Well, I mean, and, and they programmed it that way because, I mean, yeah. you put in. You put in a game and it's like, oh, it's installing game. Yeah, and this is this is this is a drawback to Blu-ray. Unfortunately, it's not fast enough. It's no. got the size, it's got the space, but it's not fast enough to load a game off of. Um, so I, that's unfortunate, uh, I think. But I mean, that's the reason. Um, oh, Bobby's saying that he's heard that the PS4 is going to be 500 gigabytes. Right, uh, it's going to be 500 gigabytes. That makes sense. And 
the hardware or the the hard drive is user changeable. Yes, yes, I did see that. I did see that. that um, that's great. Um, I don't know. Are the new ones user changeable on the Xboxes? Because no. it's inside the system. Like I'm sure you well, can. I mean, if you they really... are now, but they, it wasn't originally. No, it was. Um, well, well, yeah, you had to buy one, but there's like that case, and you could just put an R hard drive in there. But good luck, you know. Right. Um, but that that's cool that they allow that. It's not like we're gonna charge twice as much for this 100, 120 gigabyte hard drive, you know. Right. Um, but there you go. Uh, let's bring uh, Norm. Do you have a, a thing of the week yet? Thing, well, I mean, I, I've got to have. I got to say, the the new iOS is like just has blown everything mm-hmm. out of the water for me. I know we're gonna talk about it later, but uh, go um, ahead. I really go, think let's you know just, let's just iOS go with seven it now. is really awesome. Go with it now, man. Let's 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 go ahead and get into it because I think our awesome. Well, I think all of our awesome things of the week are things that just are coming out because these are the awesome things of the week. Is Apple? Right. Is Microsoft? Is Sony? Uh, um, you know, the, this is the awesome stuff that's happening, and we are all geeking out over this plethora of, of press conferences and, and technical revelations and what we're going to be doing in the next year. Uh, so I think I think it's perfectly appropriate for this to be our, our, our things of the week. Well, let, let me just chime in about Nintendo. I think you know they've haven't they always just kind of hung back, let Sony and Microsoft like duke it out, and then they just kind of come in and <laughs> do their know, like with the Wii, yeah. like you know the what? was so much inexpensive. Like when the PlayStation Three came out and the Xbox, I forget which version was out, and then the Wii was kind of behind that, but it revolutionized you know with the the wireless controllers and um, you know they really you know. This previous console like did a lot, I think. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't think you can count Nintendo totally. Oh, I'm gonna pause on him. Let's see if he comes uh, back here in a second. You know, it, go ahead, Chuch. I, I can agree to a point, mm-hmm. but they've never not tried as much as they're not trying right now. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that is yeah, true. They're, yes, they're still going well with the hardware. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will give you that. But it, you can't. No, it, you cannot have cheap hardware. And expect that to carry your game. Yeah, yeah. Are you back, Norm? Yeah. There you go. Um, but uh, you want to summarize what you just said there, Chach, in case he didn't hear you? Uh, I was just I, saying that. I, I, heard, I know I heard everything. Oh, okay. I, okay. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it happens. Uh, what you were saying, Norm? Um, with uh, no, with uh, so yeah, I guess moving on from that. Uh, I well and. The thing we you and you saw me this earlier today when we start I started to talk about you know game licensing and I with and I know you guys have probably already talked about it but isn't that like I'm th- I keep I keep thinking like that's the future of it somehow and I'm gonna be really disappointed if all the games I bought in my Sony you know PlayStation store are unavailable to me if I upgrade my system you know I, even and, though maybe I yeah. need to redownload them. And then if, if all of those cla- like you know Resident Evil One and all this like all those classic games that I bought because they're fun to play and mm-hmm. I don't need you know a game CB to to worry about or to have and I can have access to all that if it, that all just disappears you know that's that's kind of a, that's gonna be a huge bummer to me and that's not something I thought I was signing up for so and, you know as a customer I'll be think, really disappointed and I think that's the case again that that forwards compatibility. Uh, that that we're seeing with the major games, this is also going to apply to Xbox Live Arcade, unless unless somebody like the Shoot Many Robots guys decide, hey, let's rewrite this so it's still available here. You know, kind of like I don't know, I, I, and I don't know how much you guys, uh, I know, talked to you a little bit are into Steam, but you're kind of seeing that kind of situation where, hey, I bought this game over here on the PC like years ago. I have Steam sitting on my Macs, which are pretty much my newer computers are Macs, so if I'm going to play a newer game or something that have pretty good, good graphics, it's going to be on my Mac. Uh, but I'm starting to see, you know, some of my older games, some of the more recent games start trickling over. It's like, great, I don't have to boot into Windows and deal with this, right? Uh, so I'm just kind of revisiting those games I, I, I didn't get to only got halfway through like as they come over I, I, I think you know and I don't know if we're going to see that so much of uh, mm-hmm. you, you know as we're seeing Steam go you know from PC to Mac are you going to see that push of those games maybe like you know Duke Nukem 3D is probably going to be put out for the Xbox One again and I'm probably going to have to drop you know 10 bucks on that yet again if I really want to uh, play that um I can't think that, and I know there's a trademark patent kind of issue with this as well. That's why they cited the whole issue with Xbox 
uh, One games, <laughs> the original Xbox games working with 360, because again, we went from an x86 system to the power PC one of the Xbox 360. Uh, but they did have like little patches to make those work. So maybe they're just saying we're not going to bother with that this time because really it didn't work too well the first time around and most of the games didn't get, you know, adapted. Um, I don't know. I think time will tell. We're seeing Sony re-release, you know, PlayStation 1 and 2 games in HD for the PlayStation 3. Uh, You know, in lieu of backwards compatibility going out the window a couple versions ago of their console. Uh, I think they're just saying, you know what, we're not going to bother with it. You know, you guys are going to have a PlayStation 3, uh, uh, Xbox 360 uh, up to five years into the next cycle anyways. So you can stack them up. We don't care as long as you keep buying games. So, well, and that's just like the initial thing. Yeah, the the five years. I I, I mean, you don't know how long they're going to keep supporting it because I, at this rate, it could be the better part of ten years. Well, it, it, well, the only the only ones we have that have done this before are Sony. Real right. Sony has explicitly said we we have the PlayStation Three. We will support that PlayStation 2, and it will even put out new games. They're hacked down versions of Madden or whatever, uh, but we'll support that five years into the next cycle. Um, they did the same thing with the PlayStation 1. So that's the, that's the one that has the history. When the Xbox 360 came out, they dropped the Xbox like a rock. Well, but the Xbox was terrible. The, well, the, no, well, the Xbox was the number three at the time, so they weren't going to... Think about how, uh, and this is kind of Microsoft strategy, isn't it? Uh, when they updated from uh, a 7.0 Windows Phone to 8, they just said, yeah, okay, 8. Every All you guys that were our early adopters, fanboys that uh, got 7, yeah, you're, you're kind of screwed. You're going to have to wait out your two-year contract in order to use this thing because you're not getting an update to use all this new cool stuff, you know? Um, which, yeah, Apple does that to a certain point, but I'm sitting on an Apple or an iPad 1 and there's four, a fourth one out there, I understand being stuck two OSs behind, you know? Um, but, and I think, and they, they are pledging, they got way too many Xbox 360s out there to just drop it. They got way too many people watching Netflix on that thing, way too many people playing Call of Duty. There will be a Call of Duty ghost over there, and most of us are probably going to buy it because none of us are popping on a th- uh, Xbox One just yet. Of right. the, the well, general population. It, there's a difference in between uh, Sony being the only ones to have done this before mm-hmm. and where we are now. True, true. This is, this is we different. Have, we have never, ever been in this situation before. Yep. This is all new territory for everyone involved. There are several new territories here. Not only have we gone seven years of the same consoles... We've Your gone. Xbox 360 can go to kindergarten. <laughs> no, kindergarten. It, it's in like the second grade. <laughs> That's funny. Why, why, how much hard drive space does an operating system for a console take up? I mean, why couldn't they just write, you know, the software to run those games? Just upgrade that operating system to inter- interact with the new software. I think it's just just, just use the disks. I don't understand why that's so yeah, hard. I think it's just I mean, bugs and timing. And like I said, but. I think there is a patent issue because they're using, I forget, I think there's an ATI part, They ha- maybe NVIDIA that they have in uh, the Xbox. It was NVIDIA, then ATI, because everybody used ATI last generation. Like It was ATI, AMD, of course. Um, like, when you write something for a console, it's very to the bone. So you wrote it for that GPU and NVIDIA thing. So you're using like very specific NVIDIA code or in PowerPC code. And to be able to just convert that over is apparently a little more difficult and could actually be a patent issue. Because oh, well, if, you're not, if you're not allowed to adapt the, that NVIDIA code over to running on an AMD ATI chip, then there's kind of an issue there. So... Um, so they kind of pan themselves in the corner, but you know, they picked all these pieces cause it was the best deal for them to get the console together. So it's yeah, kind of, it's well. kind of that balance, you know, um, or you could do like the, we did and just have the old operating system sitting there and you just choose to boot into it. Like you're holding down the option key on a Mac. That's what I'm, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, why not? Why not just have that, that available? Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately I, I think the Wii, the Wii U are not that much different in specs. 
uh, in parts. In, in like they, they stuck with pretty much the same thing, just the next level up. So, um, well, let's bring it over to WWDC though, um, because again, I want to get into. I'm glad we touched on the the whole kind of kerfuffle there going on with the xbox uh and I'm, uh, we're, kerfuffle we're going to see that uh, uh definitely develop through the through this <coughs> i really think they're going to get just shamed away from using uh the check-ins and everything so because 24 hours to check in your console in order to use it that's a little bit ridiculous to me they didn't say that no they have said that they have Prove explicitly so show said me that. the link uh i okay we'll, we'll follow that up out of the show but uh a week show ago show me the link a week ago when they released because as far as i remember that was for multiplayer games only okay okay uh, they said that an always on internet connection was not necessary for single player mode only i'm gonna look into that but i was pretty sure that whole uh Thing they released last week that that got everybody pissed off was going to be about that. So, um, but anyways, WWDC. What is your awesome thing? Like you said, iOS seven there, Norm. Yeah, um, I, I think the, it just, I, I think there were a lot of like really great up, updates, and I really like the interface. Although it looks, it reminds me of a very Windows like uh, environment mm-hmm. for some reason. Um, but uh, I think they're finally like figuring things out in terms of like user like you know user interface and what um how people are using their phones and how to integrate social media in a way that makes sense and and integrate sharing that is um uh just i, I want to say common sense too you know uh like i think that it feels like apple is you know kind of sitting was sitting on a few of their features and just trying to see where where phones were going to develop and where software was going to develop and they took some ideas that not only that you know the other phones were using and just kind of brought it all together um i don't know i'm not a phone expert but i was i was impressed um and i like it and i saw some some criticism that it looks really confusing and um but you know like you can tell like not all the graphics are probably finalized and it looks like they still have some tweaks to do up between now and september so um yeah, it'll be it'll be good. I also was really excited um, about some of the cloud services that uh, they announced. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really interested to try Cloud Keychain. I, I know that that's been something that I've been um, really a big advocate about uh, recently. And, you know, in personal circles when I'm talking to people about internet security and web, you know, passwords and that kind of stuff. So. I wonder how secure that that's going to be, and are, you know, is that people going to adopt it? And you know, it, I really hope hope so because you know, people are just so awful with passwords, and um, you know, it's just such a huge risk, especially with email nowadays. So, um, yeah. And I hope, and then here's my final final thought. And I hope that the keynote for the web keynote will just totally kill PowerPoint because. Um, <laughs> There's no reason why you'll ever need to like worry about you know carrying your PowerPoint on a flash drive. Will your computer hook up to the projector in the room? You know, for anyone who had an issue with PodCamp in the past, you know they know that problem. But it'll be the death of the dongle almost. <laughs> and uh, you know, so I think that you know the iWork for iCloud seemed really really cool. I don't use those all those tools myself. Like I probably won't need Pages, but you know, it looked like. Once you make your keynote presentation, it's up there, and you'll be able to uh, show that presentation anywhere on any machine. You know, it just makes makes one hundred and ten percent sense. So it's kind of uh, as they were de- demoing it, I kind of thought, well, why didn't anyone do this sooner? It just makes sense, you know. At least well, a, actually, a, doesn't a um, um, there is a slideshow uh, situation in Google Docs? I haven't played with it. I don't know how good it is, uh, but that's an option. If you, if you get proficient with that, you know, I'm sure it's no uh, keynote, you know, or, you know, probably even not even close to a PowerPoint and powerfulness. Um, but, I, you know, I, I like the idea. I like the idea of just showing up, logging my account. And, uh, I, I, well, except for the fact that my my password for Google and and maybe even, or I'm using Keychain and I'm using a generated password I'll never remember. And now I can't get into my account. Or, or, you know, too many situations, they're like, why would I have internet on this? Everybody just brings a dongle. You know? Uh, you, you run into some funky situations, so I would still have, like, a physical, at least a key drive with the thing, right? Uh, oh, you should always have a backup, yeah. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> but, that's just um, smart. 
I, I think in general, if it works as flawlessly as they claim it will, you know, and, and I, I, you know, we'll be the judge of that when it, when it obviously is available, but yeah, uh, you know, and who knows how many editing options you have. It looked like it was pretty, you know, pretty sophisticated, but, um, it's cool. They need to go there just to compete with the Google docs and the office 365. Um, everybody's doing cloud. Yeah. Just to keep people in that Apple ecosystem. And that's where I run into a little bit of problem. Cause I bounce around from so many machines and at least three different operating systems. I, I, I appreciate the cloud for what it is, but I have to think about every situation. Is this something like, am I going to be doing this thing off this device? iCloud makes a lot of sense for my pictures because I'm sitting there on my phone and a photo streams over to my iPhoto on the Mac. My wife doesn't have that because she has a Windows 7 machine. So it's probably a little, I don't know what the hell she does with her pictures, actually. It's a good question. Um, you know, or, or sending stuff over and, it, you know, the, the iCloud makes sense when I'm, I'm sending a script from, from, from my iPhone to uh, uh, the iPad, you know, for the teleprompter. Uh, it, it, for the most part, it just works. Or notes, you know, I take notes in, in, in the notes app because I take it on my iPad for a meeting, go back to my computer, boom, there's everything, and I can start parsing through it and making reminders out of everything. Um, but again, it, then Google Docs still works because I need to share it with you guys, you know. Chachi's not, well, Chachi is sitting on the Mac, but he's not generally on that all day. Um, and everybody else, I believe, is PCs that works with us uh, uh, on the Mayhem show and stuff. So, I mean, that's my only problem. That's my problem with Keychain over, that's why, like, I don't think they killed LastPass and 1Password. Because not everybody has all Apple. This is still a minority. A well, I think it's going to be really helpful for people who, like my mom, for example, who hears that you need to, like I was explaining this to her, you know, you got to have different passwords. And she yeah. keeps, she lo- keeps a little black book that she writes oh. all her passwords down in, like, <laughs> lays around the house. So I don't think that that little black That's book it. is uh, going to, you know, someone's going to walk in the house and steal it, you know, and, and hack into her Knitting World mm-hmm. account. But, mm-hmm. you know, she's only using an iPad. And a lot of people are only using, you know, a, a tablet or whatever. So their or their phone. So I think that that's a way to, um, you know, at least get a little bit more secure. And as great sure. as it is, I still think uh, la- using LastPass on my phone to get into a Google account, like I just did at the beginning of the show, uh, is a little. It's like to, it's like yeah, it's three extra steps. Like I go to this app, go to my thing, copy the p- thing, go back to the app. So if I go to an app and then start thinking about well, I got to exit out of this. I hope if I'm going from this app to my Google Plus account, which I decided to open her browser for some reason, it doesn't break that chain of command. And I have to start all over again. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I know exactly. Because it's mean. not a password. I'm going to remember. Take to take that on to be more secure. But yeah, you're right. It's clunky. And and um, there's you know if Apple's going to offer this for free. And LastPass costs, I mean, it's only 10 bucks a year or something like that. Yeah, but, it's like 12 a year, which is like so more it's than the same enough. Thing. It looks like it's the same thing, and it syncs across all your devices. And, I mean, you already have to remember your you know, your Apple ID to, to download stuff. So it, it, it really makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I, I think that I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it works. I, I like the idea of it. It looked mm-hmm. it looked really user-friendly when I was um, watching, you know, in the demo. So we'll see. Uh, Chachi, you deal with a lot of situations with people uh, being really awesome with their passwords. Uh, do you think something like Keychain is going to help uh, at least at least some of your your your, your customers that are actually maybe Mac centric? Uh, yeah, there'll be a couple of them that'll use it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, the other ones they, they won't because they won't know how to work it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I I don't know. Um, I, I don't see it being much use in a general sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as I, it, I think it's geared to uh, geared more to people who are always logged into certain services. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't see it being a general public mm-hmm. use thing. And we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll see how easy it is. And, and, and at least, if nothing else, all those people going to the the. The, the sessions at the Apple stores learning how to use our Mac, I'm sure they're going to promote the hell out of this thing, uh, which will be fantastic for that, and hopefully it'll build a little bit more security out there. Um, Chachi, I wanted to ask you, though, um, you know, about web, uh, they had a VPN login for individual apps, and um, did you look into that at all? Because that seemed like something that would be really useful. This is in Mavericks? It, not uh, on iOS 7. Oh, okay. Uh, it would be it, it, yes and no. Um, it, it depends on 
the uh, the situation. I know for us, it's not secure enough. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's the yeah. thing. They're, they're still trying to get that everything up to speed for people like your situation because they do want the corporate, and they have a bit of it. Right. So. Uh, I, yeah, because, I, I mean, until, until we stop using Cisco, um, which probably won't happen anytime soon, any other type of VPN just won't be allowed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you, oh, go ahead, Norm. Um, oh, I was just gonna say I was just kind of moving on. I was I'm looking for it on their on their on the website here, but I'm not seeing anything about about it. And I know the guy just mentioned it, um, kind of in passing, uh, but it seemed like that had a lot of um, possibilities. Like some of these new features, I wasn't super impressed with. Like the radio, I could totally care less about. I mean, mm-hmm. it seems like they're just trying to get in the Pandora game, and you know sell more music obviously um they did undercut them in a and run. uh the car stuff is is seems cool but one thing i was kind of hoping they would do in the next release is allow apps to communicate with each other uh, a little bit better like if i'm in chrome or safari and i want to save a url in evernote you know give me that option to do on the ios or on my iphone but the thing um, is i think that's starting isn't it I mean, and, and, and that's one of those things that if it's happening, it's happening under the radar, and, and this is not something they're going to publicly talk about. It's something that there might be a session that they're nda would about, and we'll find out about it in, when everybody else does, you know? Because you're already getting that. If, you, if you're working in a Google app, it will open in, and give you the option of opening in another Google app. I'm, I'm, seeing, um, I'm seeing other I think Feedly will actually open straight into my Gmail, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, some other things are popping that up that you have a choice. You know, uh, I know I've seen a screen pop up. You know, when you click on a picture or something and it's like tweet it or save it to the camera roll or send a printer or email it. Like I've seen Evernote pop up. Like it seems like this is slowly expanding. Just like the idea that did, I didn't know that Siri, you could open apps. When did they add that? Obviously, this was something that happened on the back end sometime over the last year. But all of a sudden, it was like, you know, I can open Angry Birds. Oh, crap. I have six versions of Angry Birds, and they're all, all the same in Siri. Uh, but, but, but I think it's happening slowly. You know, it's just not going to be as transparent as, like, what Android does. Yeah. I, I think there's pros and cons to that. But, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know when Siri was able to open apps. I can't remember. Um, I hardly ever use Siri, though. I got to admit that, you know, and maybe that's just how I function. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's it. I think it's a use case. I use it for like I, I'm using it. I told I think I told Chachi the other day. I'm using it all day for uh, uh, hey hey, set a reminder for 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 an hour for 15 minutes for this time, and, and that's kind of you know being a freelancer. That's kind of how I block out my day because it's one of those. If I don't set those reminders, I will sit there for four hours on, on at my computer, which is definitely not healthy for anybody. Um, so that's how I like say, oh, maybe you should let the dogs out. Hey, maybe you should take a break. Hey, maybe you should have lunch. Hey, go pick up your wife, you know, and make sure I allow that time. Um, if I want something a little more informational, that's when I pull up the Google app. And it's been fantastic. So. Yeah, how about... Uh I think notification center got is it, you know is going to get an upgrade because I right now I think yeah. it's a little annoying. Um, it's limited. Just yeah, like if I get a notification, I miss it. But I saw that I got a notification and I swipe down to look at them. They're not in the order that they came in, so I have yeah. no idea what I just got notified about. Yeah, which I think that, that was just, a little bit like I think that's one of the things they might have been upgrading, or maybe I'm just thinking messages in the latest uh, OS X release. Well, notification center got a huge upgrade. They talked about it for a while. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we'll see. So we'll see that everything's coming in fall, so we have a long time. Uh, a little later, because I think I think Mountain Lion uh, came out in July last year. Uh, but it's definitely, I don't have a question. I'm dropping twenty bucks on this and getting the, uh, you know, all the upgrades. Uh, uh, kind of interesting. They're going from uh, what, what is it? It's from cats to beaches in California. I think it's su- surfers. It's surf- surfers. Is it a sur- is it surfer stuff? How interesting. Um, I think Mavericks is. I, I could be wrong. I haven't looked into it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that Mavericks is uh, just like kind of a slang term for you know, guys who are out there surfing, like okay. hardcore guys. Interesting. 
<laughs> so that's pretty random. Uh, I, I thought it was a beach or something because I thought they were saying it was locations. They're going California locations since they're best place well, in California. Did you notice how all of like the all of the stuff that they did, like the flavor text of all their demos, was surfer stuff? So I think that's it's like true. just hardcore surfers are referred to referred to as Mavericks. So. Yeah. There's a bunch of surfers um, on that development team now since they shook everything up, right? Um, oh, but I did. I did laugh when they they uh, showed the sea lion. <laughs> the sea lion. There was a lot of good. Like like Apple was really punchy. You know, we talked a little bit about Sony just kind of you know throwing jabs at Microsoft. We haven't seen an Apple like this for a while. They were just throwing throwing jabs at Samsung. They're like, oh, you don't have to go like this to share something from your phones, and uh, they 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 took jabs at a little bit of everything. Um, um, the, the, uh, AJ was actually keeping me updated because I actually had a gig and I just kind of, I had jumped in a hangout on my phone on the way home. Uh, and, uh, and he was, he was just like, he's like, that guy is like taking improv classes cause he's just reacting to everybody. Um, you know, point at the one guy that applauded for smooth scrolling. You know, uh, it was it was really fun to watch as opposed to most of the other press conferences that were like Microsoft and Sony were doing. Um, one of the right, well, well yeah. Mike, I got to ask you. So what features in the new uh, in the in the Mavericks? Oh, I don't know if I lost you. Come here. What, Come here. You're okay. there. What, what features do you want? Because uh, or, or are you most looking forward to? Because like today I was doing something and I thought, oh, it would be my life would be so much more easier if I had like the the new desktop display, whatever going on. Seriously, finders, the finder updates being tabs and the tagging. If they develop that tagging into Final Cut Pro X, which they are going to upgrade later this year to uh, be compatible with some of the new stuff, we'll talk about in a moment. Um, if if I can go in there and I start tagging my projects as I do, um, you know, with the keywords and stuff as I'm already organizing projects like that idea i can just type in wrestling mayhem show for instance and pull up the everything i've done with the wrestling mayhem show file wise or uh, you know wrestling wrestling your awesome cast 153 here's all the files for that you know because projects get broken you know every once in a while things just get split out the organization goes wonky um it, it just happens when you have a mass of stuff and i think video editors you know that you know you can't sell you can't contain all this stuff on one file it's not like a photoshop file where it's just one file it's it's a sprawling project typically right um to be able to just kind of pull that together and 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 say okay this stuff's over here this stuff's over here because finding getting to my projects in finder has just been kind of rough yeah sometimes it's a little confusing yeah. I, i'm interested to see how the final version of tags like gets organized on, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. In the sidebar there because it looked like i'm going to expect that you know if i start using tags it's, i'm going to have hundreds of tags and you're going to have thousands of tags for every <laughs> for every project probably yeah um but uh yeah that that's what i'm i'm pretty excited about i i think we can do i i i think if they start incorporating that in final cut in in the photo programs and everything it's going to be really interesting so um yeah. Well, like this really, I, we're just kind of doing all of our awesome things of the week as the entire show, aren't we? Uh, my awesome thing of the week is collectively both, uh, I, I want to say the, the, the product and the site representing the product as well. This is the site for the Mac Pro, uh, which they previewed yesterday. Oh, let me center this up a little bit for you. There you go. Now, as you go through here, let's, let's see how it works here, because I know it's working on the mouse. Like, as you scroll through the site, this is, this is a nice, slick, uh, HTML5, holy crap, website. Like, one of the nicest I've seen in a while. And also, holy crap, look at that thing. This is, this is the new Mac Pro. It's going to be dual-core Xeon processors. It it's, it's, uh, only comes up to the power button on a, on a Power Mac. Uh, in size, they showed it next to each other. Uh, it's going to be all modular, all flash based. Um, it's going to be this thing's going to start at three thousand dollars, guys. I, I can't see any other way. Dual GPUs. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Dual GPUs, uh, all flash storage. It's just that little chip there. It's actually like looks like was it hollow on the inside or a giant heat sink in the middle to pull all the heat off of those. Um, off of those boards, that's fantastic. Oh, this is the other cool part. The thing is actually on a swivel. And when you turn it towards you, the, the back towards you to plug something in, say, the they light up. 
Like it is actually a motion sensor in there. Um, people have been complaining about the 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 Mac Pros not being updated. I think two years. I think since the last major update, um, and now we get the Tube of Civilization. I know it looks weird, but I think technically, I think it's everything that you need these days, as far as like a video editor goes. Um, I think. Looking at the specs, I really think it would solve. I'm running off of like an i5 Mac Mini, and I got that thing like compressing off of my old, you know, 2007 iMac and my 2009 Mac Pro, splitting up the files to render them because I'm literally over, are having files that take about 24 hours to render at this point. Um, that this is something that that we're looking forward to. It, it's it's um, because we we ran Mac Pros in my old in my old job. And they're necessary if you're pushing lots of video. Um, and I'm definitely seeing myself kind of getting to that point. Um, and as far as, like, I know some people are saying, well, it doesn't look the C like the CPU is upgradable. It doesn't look like, you know, it's not like I can swap in cards anymore. Is I think Thunderbolt kind of replaces that. Because, um, well, Chachi, how much are you guys... Well, you guys are in kind of a different business, but how much are you guys are like actually getting into the computers and swapping out cards and stuff? Is this is this still pretty big? Every day. Every day. Now, yep. you, you, uh, most of the time, unless it's the motherboard mm -hmm. um, or a laptop part, yeah, Dell just ships us the pieces. Now, if you were let, let's say you weren't doing like like an office kind of situation and you were more serving like a, a higher end video house with something like this, do you see any technical problems with serving this kind of thing? I wouldn't be. No. Um, and, and and it's just because I don't know enough about the technical aspects of a Mac. Yeah. Um, to be useful. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, as far as I knew, for the most part, you, there's a bunch of stuff you can't touch. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and, I mean, this thing, you can open it up and you can, you can swap in the memory and everything, which is pretty much like the Mac Mini. You can you pop that thing open, the memory goes right in. Um, they're not doing anything weird with it. It looks like like they're soldering, soldering in memory with the new, uh, you know, the Mac Airs and the Retinas and the and the new, new thinner iMacs. Um, so there is, and other than that, I think any expandability you're going to do is going to be that Thunderbolt situation. Because you can put anything through there, and it's faster than anything right now. Um, so I, I think it's definitely going to make the pro people happy and saying, "Hey, we're going to update Final Cut." You know, knowing that that is still coming, I think people are kind of over the Final Cut. What the hell did you do to my software uh, issue from a couple years ago? I am really happy with the multicam situation in there right now. I've had to edit a couple of wrestling shows with it. It is fantastic as long as you shot everything right. And not so much if you didn't shoot everything right, but that's my fault. Um, but uh, it's it's. I, I think they're, they're not forgetting that pro community. Um, but I think there are a lot of people in the pro community still doing things the old way. You know, I remember making VHS as well after VHS was obsolete, and that's kind of the fact of some of those uh, uh, businesses. But I don't think this is – they're not trying to serve those kinds of businesses. Those, those, those businesses will run their Mac Pros into the ground until they have no other choice and then make a decision, you know. Um, so it's great to see that they've kind of served that. So, uh, uh, hey, as a Mac fan, Norm, are you, are you kind of excited to see this kind of uh, tube of awesomeness they put out? I'm totally drooling over it right now. Isn't it, though? It looks awesome. Not that any typical user should ever touch this thing. I, you know, that's the thing. I'm probably never going to own one. No. But it looks awesome. I Like, like really? Like, I can't, if you're doing video or 3D, this is the only reason. Or what was the one thing they said? This is a, a Bitcoin farmer. So if you're doing any of those three <laughs> things, then you should be considering the uh, Black Tube of Civilization over here. Otherwise, just get an iMac. Really, those things. I mean, I, I, there's people. There are people video editing on just fleets of Mac Minis. Uh, you know, people from this show are doing really incredible things with stacks of min Mac Minis. Uh, you know, it's, I'm waiting for a stack of Mac Minis to fall off of Rob's truck and just I'll pick them up and <laughs> exactly. I'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> Exactly, you know, make our own Mac Mini smiley face, right? Um, but I, I think, and this is the next step of that. Could you imagine, like, one, it'll be awesome to get a little cluster of this you can get as a little render farm, right? Because you just stick that in a closet. 
you know uh it takes up you're gonna want to put this on your dining room table and like feed it dinner you know i know right (laughs) there was a put it next to the urn of grandpa on the man somebody was saying i was like yeah but then my wife puts a binder on top of this thing and it melts uh it's (laughs) it is it is fantastic this is like everything I, i think it is like everything you could ever want um uh, barring backwards compatibility with some of those uh, 3D cards and everything, but it, it's guys, this, you know, that's the way they move. We know how Apple works. We can't be surprised about that. If if you own a Mac Pro, and you're complaining that your Black Magic card isn't going to work with this. You you you've been an Apple fan how long or Apple user how long? You know how they roll. You know um, what the only the only uh, certainty in Apple products is uh, obsolescent obsolescent obsolescent. So. All right. Anything else? WWC E3, WWDC E3. You guys want to talk about? I'm going to check the chat room here real quick. Um, I, I found the uh, the always on thing. You did that they that they uh, announced. Okay. And the very last thing they said is, and this is a quote. Microsoft is said to be decidingly deciding internally the amount of time between Xbox One's authentication checks. Okay, so that's probably not even going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think people are, are taking everything they hear about Xbox as the final word. Uh, again, you know, I, and that's the problem and- with the gaming industry. I, <laughs> you know, I'm a huge gamer, and I. I appreciate people who play video games. Yeah. But quite quite frankly, if I don't know you, I don't want to hear your opinion because you're already wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Some some uh, quality uh, words from Chachi. Norm, before I let you go, let me tell me about the 1200 Club I just heard about. Oh, no. Oh, it was actually just uh, an inside joke there. <laughs> uh, some of my coffee shop colleagues, we were talking, to, we were looking at the Twitter ads uh, component. And one of the guys had spent $5 on Twitter ads just to kind of see how it works. And uh, no, there were the results were you know not that exciting. But uh, we were all looking at the stats and all, how many Twitter followers we had. And they were in the hundreds. And uh, I was in the 1200s. So, and Jackie, Vessi, and I were both in the 1200 club, and they were in the less than 1200 club. So. I am four away from the 1200 club. How am I beating you in followers? Me? Yeah. Last I knew, I had like 1000, and you were like 100 above me, or something like that. And I, I looked, hey. like, looked when I saw his tweet. I'm like 1250 or something. I'm sure that like 600 of those are probably just spam. Oh, I know. Accounts. I know like half of them are bots. And that's when somebody's like, wow, you got a lot of followers. They're like, yeah, they're not real people. You know. Don't right. So, anyways, I didn't mean for that to be any hot news. It was just kind of a joke. <laughs> so, you got to watch what you tweet before the show. I'm always watching. I know, I know. <laughs> and then it becomes your title for the rest of the night. Chachi, oh, hey, anything you want to twi- uh, You want to plug? I know you're working on a lot of stuff over there. iTwixie.com, of course. If you are a preteen girl, I don't know why you're listening to the show, but thank you. And go check out iTwixie.com. <laughs> All right, well, uh, maybe I'll spoil the news here because why not? My, my oh. roommate came home from... Uh, north of seattle from last week and he is all fired up he's going to start a new blog and he wants it to be a food review blog Ooh. so we're you know we're doing the whole what is your url going to be and we found review 412.com was available wow i couldn't believe it so <laughs> that's a good so find. look for that review 412 coming soon uh we're going to work on the site this evening <laughs> so. excellent shachi's at insert coin to begin.com hurting the cattle over there that's probably not a good word for that uh, uh getting the e3 coverage out there suffering through nintendo presentations so you don't have to i want to hug my xbox or not my xbox my my original nintendo and just cry in the corner <laughs> Yes, I'm in the same um, situation. <laughs> um, I have an original so, Nintendo in my living room right now, so if you come over, you can um, live the dream, live that wish. Uh, hey, Norm? <laughs> Norm, who are you talking uh, to? <laughs> uh, I, I know, I know, you've got one right there. I have regular Nintendo hooked up right next to my Xbox, and I have spare parts for the Nintendo, so I, I'm covered. He's Thank a, you, right, I'm, he's a I'm done, I'm out. I should have left it at 1200 <laughs> 
Uh, and of course, I uh, been doing a little blogging, doing a little video blogging over at uh, Sorgatron.com. Uh, links are over there on my YouTube. I don't like to say my URL for my YouTube. Can I change it? God. Google, you make me use my real name, but I can't change the URL. It's embarrassing. Um, but uh, go check that stuff out. And, of course, everything else going on at sorgatronmedia.com uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, thanks, Arn, for being here. Thanks, Chachi. Go check us out. Contact at awesomecast.com if you want to drop us a line. Uh, also, uh, uh, Google+. Plus. Facebook, uh, look for us there and leave comments. We read them all. Um Oh, I had something real quick. Oh, oh, I wanted to mention real quick. I wanted to bring it up while we're talking about the iOS stuff. Uh, but AJ, uh, friend of the show, AJ has already downloaded the day of the beta for iOS 7 because he's that crazy. So follow him, AJ from PGH, if you're interested. He's been doing screenshots of uh, all the stuff he's finding there. Uh, one of the things I marked here, interesting set, uh, uh, setting uh, apps. Uh, oh, in iOS 7 settings, apps have to request access to the microphone. So that's something new. So um, so go check that out. And, uh, of course, his blog, virtualpotholes.com. He's got a wish list that went unfulfilled over iOS 7. Um, and with that, hey, been our awesome chat room. You guys have been hopping all night, dropping videos and stuff. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. There's the awesome dogs in your ear holes. Have an awesome week. We're